Hi and welcome to the vlog. Um, so uh, in the last one we got as far as the Queen's Head on the Worcester and Birmingham Canal uh, which was at Stoke Pound. Um, so now we're setting off on the following morning from the Queen's Head and tackling the longest flight of locks in the country, uh, the tidy big flight. It uh, goes up 217 feet, 30 locks long but only uh, two and a quarter miles in, in distance. Now this might seem a bit daunting but it's not quite as bad as it seems it's narrow beam locks so um, they, they fill up very quickly you haven't got to worry about the boat going from side to side on the lock because it's quite self-contained there's only a few inches to spare either side and um, yeah they fill up really quickly empty quickly and um, if, if you're brave enough you can hop across the the bottom gates uh, from one to the other across about, about three foot jump um, to save walking all the way around the lock to uh, to close the the the, um, the other bottom lock gate so we got a bit of a system going. I don't know. I don't know if this is a very efficient system, but um, what we were doing once we got moving, um, bearing in mind that this was in December, so it's very, very quiet. We didn't meet another boat coming the other way or travelling with us um, in all the flight. So um, you probably couldn't do this in the summer. But what we did was um, Kay would set the lock ahead, opening the the uh, bottom gates for me to come in. So I then chug off into the lock and. Uh, Kay would shut the, the towpath side bottom gate behind the boat and I'd hop off um, up onto the roof, up the ladder on the side of the lock and then with, with a rope in my hand I'd go back and shut the bottom gate on my side. Um, so once we've done that then we both open the, the top paddles uh, to allow the water to come in. Kay will then once she's opened her paddle she should go on to the next lock um, to set that. So while she's doing that, uh, I'll be waiting for the lock to fill. Once it is filled, I would shut the paddle on the off side at the top and then go across to the other side, the towpath side, and shut that paddle and then open the gate. hop back on the boat, chug through slowly. And once the back of the boat was clear, I'd hop off the boat with a rope in my hand and shut the gate behind the boat and then hopefully I'd hop back on before the boat's gone chugging up the canal on its own but <laughs> that didn't actually happen but a couple of times I've had to pull on the rope a little bit to get us to get us back um, so I can get on but um, that, that seemed to work quite well um, it only worked if there's like a, the, the short distance between the locks because if it's, if it's too far for Kay to walk then it was um, not really practical to do it but um, yeah, we got through there in about I think it's about four or five hours something like that so you know it wasn't, it wasn't a bad was a bad journey so uh, yeah, it doesn't work for everybody, but that worked for us. So after bridge 54 and I think it's lock 55, um, you can see the Tidy Big Reservoir. Uh, it was originally a clay pit. It was, it was dug out to supply uh, the brickyards locally, um, but also the, cl the clay was used for the lining of the canal when it was built to stop it from seeping water out through in, into the ground. <music> So get, to get the water to the summit, um, there's this lovely old pump house. We used to house, house an old Newcomer engine, which ran for 100 years, um, pumping water up to the summit of the canal to, to feed the flight. But this became redundant in nine, 1914, when the canal was gravity fed from a, from a reservoir, which is further up, um, I think it's called Upper Bittle Reservoir. Um, so this building now is converted into four luxury 
apartments. It's been all sorts of things in its time, and there's a little bit of information on the on the uh, fence there, all about it. But once it was a nightclub, a jazz club, and had a quite a reputation apparently in the 70s, but uh, now it's converted into four lovely apartments. That's brilliant, I just filmed that as well. So we moor up at Tidy Big Wharf. Um, this is called the, the New Wharf um, because in fact the Old Wharf is the other side of the hill. In 1804 the Old Wharf was the terminus of the Worcester and Birmingham Canal. So yeah and then when the tunnel was built there was a new new wharf built and um, there's a lot going on here. There's all sorts of things and um, there's a lovely old lime, lime burning kilns um, which was used to make the mortar to line the, uh, the the tunnel and also for most of the local brick making factories that were around at that time and it was also used for fertilizer for, for agriculture as well the squadron is going over so in its day this was a very busy place there was about 75 boats a day in the record book shown has come through here on average um, carrying all sorts of products, um, not, not just the bricks, the lime and the clay, um, but also um, Cadbury's with its chocolate crumb product, um, salt from um, Droitwich and, and Stoke Works, and uh, many other products from the Black Country. And uh, with access to the, to the River Severn, and then onwards to, to um, other ports, yeah, it, it just really cemented the um, reputation of the Black Country as being um, the, the workshop to the world in the Industrial Revolution. There's also a plaque here commemorating the meeting of uh, LTC Rault and Robert Aikman. Uh, that was in 1946 and, and this led to the formation of the Inland Waterways Association and the, the ongoing coordinated restoration of the waterways and um, so really you know, we've got them to thank for what we have here today. So you can see the church here has got a, quite a distinct sharp spire. Um, so, someone told me that it was, <laughs> it was rebuilt that way because uh, Redditch, which is quite nearby, was once the needle making capital of the world and it is like a needle shaped with like an eye at the bottom so I don't know how true that is but it does resemble a needle when you look at the spire. Uh, one other thing that we see here is uh, there's an old steam tugboat um, called Birmingham. It's one of four that used to be used for uh, getting the unpowered boats through the tunnels when steam power arrived here in 1876. So before that, the yeah, leggers were used. They used to be they used to be on the top of the roof of the boat, um, legging the boat through by um, forcing their, their weight against the the roof of the tunnel. So yeah, once the steam tugs come along, uh, their job was was made redundant. So the following day, we go on through the tidy big tunnel. That's uh, 580 yards long.
and that takes us through a deep cut under a bridge and then into the Old Wharf, um, which is now uh, Anglo-Welsh's hire boat fleet's uh, centre. And uh, yeah, it's quite busy when we came through here because we just come out of lockdown. Um, no boats were running, it was out of season and uh, they were like three deep to, uh, to our right and then there's an, another uh, series of boats on our, on our, on our, on our left and um, yeah, so it's quite tight for you there. We went through there and then uh, on through another tunnel, the Shortwood Tunnel, similar in length to the Tardy Big. And then from there, um, it was on down through a nice picturesque area of agricultural and woodland before we uh, approached another marina. Uh, this one was the ABC Marina at Alva Church. So, and this is our destination. We we intended to stay here for a little while. Um, and we said if we if we didn't like it, we'd go back down the flight to to Stoke Prior for Christmas. But um, as it turned out, we all went back into lockdown again in late December, and uh, we were here for some time. So, but that will be the that will be the subject of the of the next vlog. So, um, that that's about it for today. Um, thanks very much for watching, and if you like it, please um, put the thumbs up and um, subscribe if you can. So, thanks very much. See you again. Bye.